So hi, everyone. Um, I have been going through uh, statuses and posts that I've been writing on social media over the last few weeks, and I've been making videos talking about each of those statuses. Um, so I want to continue to do that. But today I'd like to focus on uh, one of the statuses that I wrote yesterday or a couple of the statuses that I wrote yesterday, because that information is sort of current and happening now, but also to look at why these situations are occurring and what they are moving us into. So as everyone who sort of is familiar with my work knows that I'm writing a novel and everything I talk about on my videos on YouTube is complete fiction and um, everything I discuss is regarding the novel I'm writing. The novel that I am writing is called The Bifurcated Village. And um, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about um, one of the uh, scenarios in the bifurcated village um, so that you may understand about the information in the in the next chapter. So uh, our protagonist is called Gloria Love and she is a part human, part um, elf or part pixie. And she is um, working in a spiritual sense to um, become psychic and uh, spiritual and, and more tuned in to the energies around her. And she has different guides. One of her guides is um, the uh, Divine Mother. Um, and the other one is the Pleiadian Council of Light. So she manages to speak to these guides. So Gloria Love and her friends, um, what they like to do is tell stories and um, they stand up on platforms to speak about these stories. So in the village, Gloria, and all of her friends, they have platforms that are made of stone and wood and they stand on that platform and they speak. And other people in the village gather around at the bottom of the platform and they listen to Gloria Love and her friends uh, tell their stories. Um, now there are these other beings that live in the village or around the village, not necessarily in the village, but they are trying to control the village basically. And they are known as the evil overlords. And the evil overlords, what they do is every so often they will take a platform away from one of Gloria Love's friends. And that's been happening a lot in the village recently. Several of her friends have lost their platforms and they can no longer stand up and tell their stories. So um, when Gloria Love went to see the Divine Mother, who is um, a, a magical elder, she is a, a white witch, if you will. When uh, Gloria Love went to see the Divine Elder, she said, you must be careful when you stand on your platform. You must tell the right stories. If you make a mistake and tell the wrong stories, then the overlords will take your platform. So obviously Gloria Love went back to her platform in the village and is now taking great care not to make any mistakes and to tell the right stories so that the overlords will not take her platform away from her. So I need to just sort of um, talk about that first before we then go into the next um, part of the fictional story. Now in this particular chapter, we have Gloria Love. As, as I said, there is the, uh, the, the wise mother um, and the Pleiadian Council of Light, that's Gloria Love's guidance. Um, but there are two overlords that are mentioned in this particular chapter, and their names are Mert Heinekak and Andreas Kuo Mu. Now, to discuss these two overlord characters, there's not really a lot to say about Andreas Kuo Mu in this particular part of the chapter, except to say that the village is um, split into several different sections because the village is quite large. In fact, in this urban fantasy fiction novel, the village is actually as big as a planet, possibly bigger than planet Earth. Um, and some of these um, domains within the village are named after countries that we have here in real life, which is why it's an urban fantasy. So you have the American part of the village, the American domain, you have the United Kingdom domain, you have the European domain and, and the Australian domain. So the, the domains are little sections of the village where different people live and they are named after countries in our real planet. 
So there's a story that's been playing out in the American domain, and that features the overlord Andreas Kuomu. That story that's playing out is basically identical to the story that is playing out in the United Kingdom domain in the village, and that features the overlord Mert Heinekak. So if you look at these two overlords in these two domains, you will see that the story playing out is basically identical. It might not look it to someone who isn't um, aware, but to actually look with a awareness, you will see that this story is the same and it's playing out to the same ends. And this is the story that will play out in all of these domains eventually in various ways, but it's the same, same um, story, uh, the same play out, with the same agenda. So I'm going to read one of the statuses I posted yesterday on Telegram, which directly relates to this novel and to the bifurcated village. So somebody wrote to me and asked about the novel and they said, Magenta, your character in your novel, uh, Mert Heinekak, is it true that in the novel, he has an affair? He's a married man and he has an affair. And is it true in the novel that you are going to write um, within the story that this character does get caught out having that affair? Or in the novel, are you going to move the storyline into uh, where um, Mert Heinekak is actually um, staging an affair and isn't really having an affair, but is staging it in order to confuse others? And so I replied and said, it's important now for us all to be, rec to be able to recognize a flag of the false kind. So we understand the trap that is being laid and we don't fall into it. Yes, the narrative within my novel will be that the character Mert Heinekak is staging this situation and that it isn't real. And that is done to create another problem reaction solution scenario as we go further into the novel. It also acts as a distraction from the real negative acts that this character has perpetrated in the novel. He is actually one of the baddies in, in the story. So this acts as a double whammy, if you will, presenting the overlord, the demonic one, the evil one, if you will, as simply a Jack the Lad who got caught out. The hypocrisy of such an act, as in um, this particular overlord, Mert Heinekak, has um, given rules to the in individuals in, in the village. And those rules involve not being caught in compromising situations with others that you're not in a relationship with or that you don't live with. Um, and, and, and those in the village are predominantly following the rules. But of course, he, Mert Heinekak, in this sort of presented staged affair, didn't follow the rules um, that he'd laid out himself. So that is why it presents as hypocrisy. So the hypocrisy of such an act is deliberate. Presenting hypocrisy to the individuals in the village is deliberate because what that does is it will create extreme anger within the inhabitants in the village um, it will make them feel um, incredibly frustrated and, and to a point of, of being furious, that level of hypocrisy, because it affects them personally. So the agenda is to create extreme anger within the inhabitants within the village. And then the village inhabitants will start to refuse to follow these rules that Mert Heine Kack has set up for the village inhabitants. They will say, well, no, I'm not going to follow this rule. You didn't follow the rule. Why should I follow the rule? If the village inhabitants decide to not follow these rules and refuse to do the things that Mert Heine Kack has told them that they need to do, then Mert Heinekak can call upon the lesser overlords, the, the sort of um, security teams, similar to our police force or that sort of thing in, in our actual reality. He can call upon those teams um, to uh, go out and um, take those village inhabitants and, and, and uh, tell them that they're in trouble because they haven't followed the rules. Also, what they can do is blame 
any new um, situation, any uh, variable that may um, appear upon the people because they didn't follow the rules. And um, there is a pathogen that is um, sort of rife in the village and that pathogen is called um, pathogen number 19. So what the overlords would like to do is sort of ramp that up and, and create a new pathogen, um, one that's mutated, and they want to call that pathogen 21. So um, if the inhabitants within the village refuse to go along with Mert Heinekak's rules, then the overlords can turn around and say, right, we now have pathogen number 21 and it's your fault because you refused to follow the rules and you didn't sort of stay away from each other and you didn't cover your face with the muslin cloth that was given to you by the, um, the floating cloth birds. These are giant birds that uh, bring cloth down to the inhabitants of the village and, um, and gives them the cloth and then the, uh, the needlework women will, will uh, make little squares out of the cloth and everybody has to wear the piece of cloth over their face. So that's one of the rules that was given. Um, so if this overlord is seen to not be following the rules, then the inhabitants of the village won't want to either. So that's basically the first part of that chapter, which is kind of setting us up for the next chapter, which is a major part of the story. So I'm going to sort of move forward a little bit from some of the other posts that I made and go right to this one, because this is the one I want to talk about the most. So let's go down here. Okay. So this is a question that someone uh, sent in about the novel. And um, that's given me the chance to talk about this sort of big plot line in the, in the novel that's coming in in sort of, I would say, um, we're, we're looking at around the middle of the novel when we talk about this plot line. So everything in the earlier part of the novel, which sort of takes place over about 15, 16, 17 months, something like that. Um, everything in, in, in that part of the novel is preliminary, setting the stage for the sort of bigger stories that are yet to come in the second part of the novel. So this is the question that someone sent in to me. Magenta, in your novel, The Bifurcated Village, your character, Mert Heinekak, um, if he has staged a situation where he's pretending to be caught out having an affair, and that was deliberately staged to discredit him in the eyes of the uh, village inhabitants, then could they not do this with all the different overlord characters within the state that is deep? And the state that is deep just means um, there is a certain area um, in the uh, village where you go down um, through a sort of um, a, a well, you go down a well, into um, an underground reality, an underground world. And um, that's the state that is deep in, in the bifurcated village. So the, the, the state that is deep the characters are the overlords. So could they not do this with all the different state that is deep characters, all the overlords and pretend that they've lost as in there is some kind of chess game or battle going on between the overlords, the state that is deep characters that live down um, at the bottom of the well in this sort of underworld reality and the, and the, the village inhabitants and all of the um, individuals of light and those that are half pixie and half fairy. There's kind of some kind of battle or chess game going on between them. So what this person is saying here is, could they pretend they've lost as in could all of these overlord characters be discredited in some way have to leave their high position as an overlord within the village and then bring in new people to save the day but those people are all even higher up overlords and move into a one village government so what that means is that instead of having um, several different governing bodies uh, made up of different overlords in the American domain or the United Kingdom domain or the Italian domain or the Australian domain, 
Instead, you would have just one village government. So there'd be one government that governs the entire village. And, and, uh, but for the overlords to get to a position where they create this uh, one village government, what they would have to do is take down the governments that are governing each domain. And they would do that by discrediting these different um, overlord characters. Um, and uh, making the village inhabitants believe that that's real so that when all of those different characters, those different overlords get taken down, the village inhabitants will celebrate because they will think, yay, we've won. We've won. And these awful overlord governments have been taken down. We're now going to get something far better, which is a one village government of all of these um, authentic, new, wise people. But what the question is asking is, is this really um, a, a, a false ploy? Is this yet another chess move by pretending that they have lost the battle and that the village inhabitants have won? So here is my reply, and that was a great question. When we move into the novel and we look at the storyline, then yes, this is pretty much the playbook. So basically everything this person has asked is, you know, the answer is yes, that's how, that's how the storyline is going to go in the novel. So well done for this person for working out how the novel should go. Um, so what you're seeing here is the trifurcation beyond the bifurcation. So we have a bifurcation, which is a split of two. So we have, um, within this is actually within the village which is why the novel is called the bifurcated village in the village you have the inhabitants that are aware that the overlords are trying to um herd them into some kind of uh, control structure and you have these other inhabitants in the village who believe that these overlords and the, in these different governmental domains are actually trying to help them because there is this pathogen and they're trying to help them to um, deal with that pathogen and other potential issues in the village. So there is a bifurcation. The trifurcation beyond the bifurcation is where there is a three world split, if you will, a three village split between three different um, aspects of individuals within that village. So that comes after this bifurcation and the bifurcation is in line with cosmic elements within the um, skies, within the galactic reality that is around this fictional world, the village. And the trifurcation occurs when there are changes, big changes within that galactic field that mirror the way of life and the different um, uh, philosophies and beliefs and, and awareness that occur within the inhabitants within the village. So what you're seeing is the trifurcation beyond the bifurcation, meaning that um, when you ask about this false, uh, what it, in the novel, um, the Pleiadian Council of Light tell Glory, Gloria Love that what is occurring is a false awakening. That false awakening is, is like um, a stepping stone into this trifurcation because that's when there are three, um, not just necessarily groups, but everything splits into a trinity rather than a duality, if you will, in the novel. The double bluff that results in the first great awakening and the false win. So the double bluff is these um, overlords um, being um, discredited in the eyes of the village inhabitants and all the village inhabitants thinking we've won, we've won this battle. That's a double bluff because <laughs> really that's a false win because the new overlords that come in that pretend to be one of the village inhabitants and much better um, and, and are able to do things in a different way and are able to listen to what the, the village inhabitants want and everyone thinks, oh, this is so much better and that will be the one village government. Really, they are overlords coming from the same state of the deep reality down through that well. They are, they are the same, uh, they're from the same team. And uh, to be honest, they are even more um, 
powerful in their in their darkness, if you will, in their dark magic than the um, current overlords that are serving as these um, governmental bodies in all of these different domains in the village. So the double bluff that results in the first great awakening and false win, followed by the second great awakening and true win. So what this is, is we are looking at an awakening of the inhabitants in the village. So we already know that some of these village inhabitants are awake and aware, but what we're looking at is, if you will, a great awakening on, or an awakening that is great. And what that means is everyone in the village wakes up or at least sort of above 90%. And they all are aware that there is some kind of um, um, a plot or if you will, conspiracy uh, against them. So, but the first awakening is an awakening to a false win. So you're going to have this group of aware individuals within the bifurcated village. Now, some of those aware individuals who are aware sort of earlier in the novel, um, now in the novel, if you will, they will not realize that this is a double bluff. They won't realize it's a false awakening. They will um, think that it's a win, e even to the point where some of those friends of Gloria Loves that were standing on the platforms and telling stories, they often um, deliver, if you will, news or intel or information to the village inhabitants. And even some of those individuals will believe that this win is a true win. And all of these governmental overlords in all of the different domains in the village um, that are being discredited and taken down and replaced, they will think all of that is real. But there are a smaller number of aware indiv individuals in the village who are aware that that's not a true win. It's a false ploy. Now, I'm not saying that this is definitely going to be written this way in the novel, because obviously, as you write a novel, you can have a blueprint for that novel. But as you begin writing the story, other things come to you in the moment. So this potential blueprint could change. But what this false awakening is all about is the overlords have some really really advanced technology that's not available to the village inhabitants so what those overlords did is they would um, use that technology and what that technology did was it showed them it was called um, the window of opportunity um, it was sort of like uh, like, a, like a mirror, like a looking glass, if you will, like Alice looking through the looking glass. The window of opportunity was this powerful sort of quantum machine that had the ability to see the future. And when the overlords looked into this, um, this window of opportunity quantum machine years ago, they saw this, this awakening take place, this huge awakening take place all across the entire village and in other villages and in all the domains in the villages. And these individuals that were seen in this technology, in this um, window of opportunity, knew what those overlords had been doing for thousands and thousands of years to the inhabitants in the village. So they thought, well, we, we, we can't have this. We need to find a way to steer these timelines in this village so that it doesn't get to that. And they called in all these experts in, in, in um, you know, quantum theory and, and, and true science and, um, and uh, how, how to navigate timelines and how to change timelines. And whatever they did, it, it, it always ended up the same because what they were actually seeing was an inevitability, a, a singularity. So they were, they were trying to um, change it and they realized it couldn't be changed. But what they realized they could do was create a false event or false series of events that matched the energy of the real event in the hope of if you will fooling reality itself that's 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 basically what's happening in the village so as you will um, be aware this isn't just a um, um, a, a sort of fantasy fiction novel this is sci-fi as well this is a futuristic science fiction novel as well so that's what they're aiming to do they saw this awakening of the great variety in the village 
and within all the domains within the village and within other villages um, in other realities. And so they wanted to create an energy, create an event that would fool reality to try to to try to steer the timelines into a, a different outcome in that singularity. That isn't going to work, as you will find out as you go further into the novel. Um, what's actually going to happen in the novel is this false awakening, false screen that matches the energy. So it's like, let's pretend that there's an awakening or let's trigger an awakening um, and a celebration for this win but that the, the, the win won't be real and the awakening will be awakening to something that's a staged theatrical performance rather than an actual presentation. So that's going on, but at the same time, reality itself in the village is playing out because that's the energetic pattern and, and frequency and energy within reality within the village. So it's very complex for even... Um, people like Gloria Love, who are psychic and clairvoyant and those who are able to communicate with guides or communicate with beings that live in other villages and in other planets galactically, it's really difficult because what they're seeing here is a superimposed reality between a false presentation and a true one. So if you, if you will, there's an inverted matrix that is superimposed within the real matrix and these two matrices are merged. So it's very difficult for even a psychic, a clairvoyant, a tarot card reader, or any of these people, any of these individuals in the village to be able to see which is what and what is where. However, the inhabitants in the village um, that are half elf, half pixie, half fairy, and have this sort of plasma light within their sort of cellular structure, they are able to, if they are clear and trauma-free and have been doing this spiritual work, they're able to bypass through all this falseness and get to the true organic structure and see what is occurring. And they'll be able to either see that themselves or they'll be able to get information from the guidance that they're with. So that's what's playing out in the village. So we have a superimposed uh, false awakening of the great variety followed by the true awakening of the great variety. Now it's linear how it's presented and it looks as though it's linear how it occurs in the timeline of the village. So first we'll have the false awakening and second we'll have the real awakening. And the real awakening is genuinely individuals waking up to the real truth and genuinely the actual overlords being brought down. Yes, that's all part of the novel. So it's not that it's not going to happen. It's just going to happen falsely first and then for real second. But, and this is the complex issue, it is not necessarily going to play out in a linear way. So we've got this false win, this false awakening of the great variety and this true win this, this true awakening of the great variety happening at the same time, but in a linear way over a long period of time. So it's like, well, what's this part of? Is this part of the real downfall of the overlords? Or is this part of the theater that they have staged to pre pretend it's their downfall? And what about this awakening to this realization? Is this a real awakening? Or is this part of a false awakening? Or are the two mingled together? And the answer is the two are mingled together. You could actually have in one hut in the village, you could have two half pi pixies in the village, both, let's say they're sisters. And one of these half, half human, half pixie beings will be aware of the, um, the uh, false uh, awakening and believe the narrative that's playing out in the village. And the other one, that's in the same household will be aware of the deeper truths. So Gloria Love kind of dreams about all of this. Gloria Love speaks to the Pleiadian Council of Light. She goes to talk to the wise mother, the ancient um, wise woman. And she, she discovers all of this. She, she finds out that this is a plot within a plot. 
um, you know, that's why it's in, in, in the explanation I put up on Telegram to explain about this particular play out in the novel, I referred to this as a double bluff. Um, so she realizes that this is happening. So she, luckily she's still got her wooden brick platform that she's able to stand on in the village and the other inhabitants in the village can come around her platform and she can speak and she tells stories and um, she's able to explain to the inhabitants in the village uh, what's playing out. Now, the reason why she has to be careful and, 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 and tell the right stories is because the double bluff is the bit that, that the overlords want to keep hidden. They don't mind if everybody finds out about um, these, these uh, theatrical staged, um, indiscretions that are going on in these um, governmental overlords within each uh, village domain. And, and, and they don't mind about the awakening and they even don't mind about some of the people that are similar to Gloria Love that are psychic and clairvoyant that are kind of talking about this big situation because that's, that's still talking about the, the false one. Um, so they're okay with all of that, but they don't want anyone um, talking about the double bluff. So Gloria Love is very careful and she tells stories um, and she talks about the village life and she talks about the rabbits and the unicorns and she talks about the beautiful rainbow colored butterflies. And, um, but in between discussing um, the unicorns and the butterflies and the rabbits and all of the beauty in the village, um, she is able to sort of uh, deliver the information. Um, so that's that's what Gloria is doing. So I'm going to carry on with this. Um, in, uh, sorry, not Instagram. This uh, um, Telegram. Although I may well have posted this on it on Instagram as well in a slightly different way. Um, so the double bluff that results in the first awakening of the great variety and the false win followed by the second great awakening of the great variety and the true win. So this is all taking place in the trifurcation energy. This blueprint, so a blueprint for this play out, blueprint for this story within the novel is extremely complex. It's really important to know that this is complex, multi-layered, layers upon layers upon layers upon layers, really, really complex. It is not a one track story. So if you see something in the village, if one of the vi village inhabitants see something or hear something, it's never just as it's laid out. There's always something else and something else and something else behind it. It's being played out at multiple levels and in several dimensions. So this village uh, exists in multiple dimensions and there are other quantum dimensions and other villages and this entire story is playing out within all of these dimensions to the point where um, even some of the, um, the, the, the higher dimensions beyond the, the third dimensional reality in the village is being manipulated by these overlords, but is also holding much freedom because of all of these um, awakened human hybrid elves and human hybrid pixies and human hybrid fairies that live in the village. So I went on to say the awakening is multi-layered and quantum. So it's important to know that. So then I said, so what is the answer for the village inhabitants? You know, what, what's the answer for them? Those that are activating this plasma light and that are growing their wings and are actually becoming fairies and pixies and elves and um, all of the other beautiful dynamic rainbow frequency beings that they truly are in their, in their true sense. Um, what is the answer for these village inhabitants as they go forward, uh, specifically for those who are awake and those who, who awaken um, afterwards? You know, what was the answer for these individuals? So um, this is how that storyline is going to go in the novel. And this is the advice that came to Gloria Love from the Pleiadian Council of Light and from the um, ancient um, Divine Mother. This play out is occurring in real time. Each chess move made by each side in response to their move. So no one can see how this plays out 
as all that there can ever be is a blueprint or template. So what that means here is it's occurring in real time. You can't look at what's going to happen before it's happened. You can only see the blueprint of it. And that blueprint is based on the intentions and magical intentions, so focused intentions of the overlords within the, the underground world down that well, and within the intentions of the innocent and beloved plasma activated hybrid human and elf human and pixie human village inhabitants. So you have these, these, these two different polarities um, and their intentions that are uh, focused and the intentions of the overlords are focused are creating the blueprint that can be seen by Gloria Love and that can be accessed via communication with the Pleiadian Council of Light and through communication with the Divine Mother. So um, that can only ever be a template or a blueprint based on those intentions. And that's why you have a superimposed um, issue here because you've got two lots of intentions that are focused going into this pre-matter reality fabric that creates the reality in the village. So as you can see, this isn't just a fantasy fiction novel or even a science fiction novel. This novel is, um, if you will, quite uh, spiritual in its presentation and quite sort of um, philosophical, I, I would say. So there's, there's a lot in the novel at multiple levels that you, you would become aware of as you, as you read it. Um, so each chess move made by each side in response to their move. So that's why it's a blueprint, because if the overlord makes a move, the energies, the frequencies, the, the heart, the knowing, the actions of the village inhabitants are going to be influenced by that move. And some of those actions are going to be in response to a false belief, and some are going to be in response to a, a, a true belief. So those that are staying within that sort of uh, observer viewpoint, zero point, are the ones that are able to take their own um, consciousness and knowing and place that into this um, future field that will um, manifest a, an actual reality from it. I'm just going to check if this is still recording because I have actually had some, um, some issues with my internet, but it looks as though it is. Okay, that's good. So each chess move made by each side in response to the move. So as the village inhabitants make a move, then the overlords choose which move they will then make. And the overlords have a, a set of moves in front of them because they are the ones that have created this whole play out. So they have multiple different um, options with which to choose, multiple different steps or agendas, if you will. Um, the inhabitants of the village have been innocent on a conscious level to this play out, but fully aware on a subconscious level, because when they incarnated as um, hybrid elves or hybrid pixies or hybrid fairies into the village, they incarnated with like a memory field within their DNA. And that is what is being activated now, which is why it's playing out in real time. So as a step is made, they know what to do. They know how to move forward with the next step. So, in response to their move. So that's what's happening. The overlords respond to the moves of the village inhabitants and the village inhabitants respond to the, the moves of the overlords. So no one can see how this plays out beforehand because we don't know what moves each side are going to make. So when you look at the blueprint, it's quantum with all these different potentials in it. And you can't say which potential is going to play out because even when you see as a remote viewer or a clairvoyant or a channel, even when you see a potential play out that's the most probable, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the one that's actually going to play out. It actually could be the least probable that actually plays out. That's far less likely. That's why it's the least probable. 
but it could. So um, someone who is like Gloria Love, able to communicate with the Pleiadian Council of Light and stand on her platform and, and talk to the other village inhabitants, um, those, indi those individuals that do that, like Gloria Love, need to be aware of this complex quantum blueprint that they're looking at. And the issue is some of these individuals that stand on the platforms and tell the stories are only seeing bits of the blueprint that, because they're not able to access the, the full complexity. Um, so each village inhabitant must rely on their own knowing before anything else, before any other speaker. And if they want to walk around the village and go and listen to all the different speakers on the different platforms, they can do that. But they need to listen to them and take that on board as a potential. So Gloria Love is saying this and this uh, hybrid fairy over here with the, the blue wings and the, and, and the long sort of beautiful green hair. Um, she's saying something different, but that also sort of resonates. And then they can go back to their hut and sit down in meditation and then go within and say to their own guides or their own self, their own intuition, you know, what's what's right here? What what is what is playing out here? Show me. So the inhabitants are all beginning to do this. And I say beginning. I mean, some of them have, have been doing this for a long time. But um, even inhabitants in the village who've only just woken up to this sort of false awakening, if you will, they're beginning to do this. They're beginning to learn to trust that inner resonance, and that's the plasma DNA that is kicking in with all of these beautiful. Um, high souls, because really what we are looking at here is a, is a demon versus angel play out. Um, the, the overlords down, down the well are the demons and the village inhabitants are the angels. It's, it's a positive negative play out or service to others, service to self, whichever way you want to look at it. So all there can ever be is a blueprint or a template that's complex and very, very multi-layered. The connected village inhabitants are the only ones to have the actual manifestation of this at their fingertips or the tips of their wings. <laughs> um, and it plays out in real time. So as you get to the point of the overlord making the step, making the move and the village inhabitant then making their chess move, that's when you come into that and know what's happening and what to do. You may have seen it beforehand as a, as a potential within multiple potentials, but when it actually happens, that's when you can stand and see it because it's playing out. And then you can think, right, I know what this means. I know where this is going. I know what my role is. I know what I have to do. So that's what's happening here. And I'll read that again. The connected village inhabitants are the only ones to have the actual manifestation of this at their fingertips, and it plays out in real time. Hence, the new plasma light codes coming into the DNA field and light body of the village inhabitants through the eclipse season and the solstice gateway. So, of course, in the village, they have eclipses. And they recently had a lunar eclipse followed by a solar eclipse and um, a solstice um, gateway, which is, um, you know, exactly the same as we have in our real world. As I said, this is an urban fantasy fiction. So a lot of the village um, uh, world building is, it, as, as a fiction writer, as, a, as an author, the world building that I'm creating as the author is based on our actual real world, you know. So, hence the Jezebel juice program. So what that is, is that you remember I told you before about an orchard and there were lots of apples being grown and then there was this um, evil witch and um, she was uh, putting poison into the apples and creating apple juice and she was making the village uh, inhabitants drink it and that was all part of the, um, uh, the uh, rule coming in from the overlord Mert Heinekak for the UK domain in the village. And then there were other overlords managing the other domains in the village. 
Um, but all of them were being given this, this juice to drink. And um, one of the naughty fairies that delivered this juice was called Jezebel. And she flew around to all the different domains in, in, in the village and, and offered this apple juice. And uh, a lot of people felt, well, I need to drink this because we all know how healthy apples are. And apple juice was being um, touted as the cure for this, this pathogen 19. And so many, many people drank it. But of course, there were um, the aware individuals who knew that the Jezebel juice program was actually coming from poisoned apples. So they didn't drink the apples. Um, and they also knew that this pathogen wasn't any threat to them if they had a, a healthy immune system. And um, if the, the, even, even if they um, caught any, some kind of pathogen, they would just go back to the heart and um, you know the, the local um, uh, healers would come to them and do their little sort of healing dance around the hut with lots of drums and crystals and that they would recover. So, uh, so that was yet another layer to this um, false presentation that the overlords had created in, in the uh, village in the novel. So it is not the juice versus the pathogen, but sorry, I've missed a bit out. Hence the Jezebel juice program in a race against time. So what's happening here is the overlords are constantly saying, you must drink your juice and it, it needs to be drunk sort of now because we're in a race against time. And, and that part of it is true. The overlords really are in a race against time. They're really, really, really wanting everyone to drink the juice quickly because they know they haven't got that much time before this thing happens. So it's making them nervous. They, they need to sort of, you know, get this done in time. There, there, isn't, there isn't enough time to let people um, decide whether they want to drink apple juice or not. They need to sort of get that juice into the people ASAP. So they're telling the truth. These overlords are telling the truth when they say um, they're in a race against time. But what they are saying is that race is the apple juice versus the pathogen. So the pathogen will get worse and worse and worse, but if you can get the juice in, then you'll stop the pathogen. That is the false presentation. Being in a race against time is true, but the false presentation is juice versus the pathogen. The real presentation is juice versus the awakening. And that's the thing that is happening, is the awakening. And when the awakening gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you have more and more open hearts, more and more awareness, which then adds weight and strength um, with these um, focused intentions that then create this singularity, inevitability, and that everything will play out in a more positive service to others, uh, way. So that's what's occurring in the village. That's the crux of the battle. That's the crux of the chess game. It is a race against time. It's a race to who can get these um, focused intentions through their consciousness into the pre-matter grid to create the play out, the manifestation of the singularity. Now, when you look at the blueprint, Every single one of these complex uh, probabilities and potentials lead to the singularity, which is the awakening of the great variety. And it is the awakening of the great variety in an organic, real sense. But the other intentions are focused strongly through their black magic coming in from the overlords to create this false awakening, to superimpose upon the true awakening. So it's important to understand the complexity of this and how deep it goes, because this is a spiritual battle in the village. That's, that's what's happening. The overlords and the, and the um, village inhabitants and, and all of the life around the village are engaged in a spiritual battle between light and dark. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the play out. So it's not the juice versus the pathogen, but the juice versus the awakening and activation of the village inhabitants who are able to shield the entire village and the galactic reality with their light. So what that means is 
as they awaken, as they take this plasma code into their DNA and, and present as fairies and pixies and elves that it, it, that is a more stronger presentation than the human that they have been. And yet really what they are becoming is the organic human, which is a merge of multidimensional beings and intelligences and consciousness. This is what's happening to the village inhabitants. And as they do this, they become a shield through their consciousness, through their open heart for the entire village, even those who are asleep and even those who have drunk the juice, although um, that again has a whole other sort of story to it. And that sort of takes place in, a, in another chapter. And I have spoken about that before. If you go back to my um, you know, most recent videos, I do talk more about the, the, the juice. Um, so these village inhabitants are able to shield the entire village and the galactic reality with their light. The answer is to be connected to an authentic, benevolent, higher dimensional source, or, if you will, to a balanced, activated intuition through training that has taken place for several years throughout your life. What that means is you are an inhabitant in the village, you are either connected to your higher guidance. This could be an angelic presentation, the Pleiadian Council of Light. It could be the White Wing Collective Consciousness of Nine. It could be any of these higher dimensional um, consciousness structures. It could be um, avatar beings, extraterrestrials. It could be archangels. It could be ascended masters, or if you will, to a balanced activated intuition. So the intuition within that's finely tuned through individuals who have been through trauma, integration, and who stand in the observer viewpoint and um, view everything from that aligned space. They align with the singularity and the inevitability. Now I went on to say, um, a balanced activated intuition through training that's taken place for several years throughout your life. Um, a few people misunderstood what that meant and said, does this mean that the village inhabitants have to go through years and years of training? I'm exhausted. I'm lazy. I don't want to go through years and years of training. No, that isn't what it means. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you have to start training right now and go and do some courses. If you're, if you're a um, you know, uh, an incarnated hybrid human fairy, you don't have to go and start training. What it means is that these village inhabitants have already been trained. They've already been trained for years, even though they may not even know it. And it doesn't, when I say training, they haven't necessarily gone to a course or sat down in their hut reading loads and loads of, of um, texts from the local um, library. What they have done is taken their life experience and they have um, learned from that life experience and they have been trained in a spiritual, psychic way, in a multidimensional way. So it isn't just about life experience in a third dimensional sense. It's multiple dimensional experience through the dream work as well. So these are the individuals that are activated. So the training that's taken place for several years throughout your life. This is just getting a, a, a presentation of what intuition is, what guidance is, because it's the same thing. The authentic, benevolent, higher dimensional source is the same thing as the balanced, activated intuition through training that's taken place. It's the same thing. So that, that there is the answer when you're connected to it. And any question you ask, you could say, oh, Magenta, when I'm reading your novel or when I'm listening to you talk about your novel, what does this mean? What does this mean? How can I deal with this? You know, what, what can the um, village inhabitants do about their loved ones who have drunk and drunk the apple juice or et cetera, et cetera. When you're connected to an authentic, benevolent, higher dimensional source or hold a balanced, activated intuition through years and years of training, your answers are always there. So the next question is, well, how do you get to connect to um, an authentic, benevolent, higher dimensional source? How do you get to um, hold a balanced, activated intuition? And if you go back through my body of work for the last 13 years, um, the teaching for that is there. And that was the preliminary setup for now. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that all of the um, material that's been sort of coming through me and that I've released on my YouTube channel was because of this novel. 
all of the spiritual information that's been delivered. I didn't know it was for this novel, but if you go back, you will find that all of the all of the videos over the last 13 years relate to what I'm now writing in the novel, which is um, amazing, really. It's quite magical how it's happened. Um, so the village inhabitants are well prepared, are well prepared. They, they've had their training. They've got their connection. Many plasma monadic structures will be incoming as downloads. So this is what's happening to the village inhabitants. They are about to receive plasma monadic structures incoming as downloads to do with this whole blueprint, this whole uh, template that I'm talking about. And the village inhabitants who stand in knowing with bliss charged love activated fields will know what to do. These plasma downloads will show you what to do as we move into the main part, the central point of this blueprint that is um, a pre matter template created by these two different focused intentional consciousness fields coming in from the village inhabitants and the overlords. The movement in the domain known as London in the United Kingdom domain today, so this was posted yesterday on the 26th of June. So what actually happens, because um, I'm, I'm marrying up the dates in the novel with dates that are occurring in our actual real reality, what actually happened in the village were um, many of the hybrid fairies and hybrid pixies and hybrid elves, they um, went for a long walk all around the village. And there were just, you know, thousands of them, potentially up to a million of them. And they walked all around the village. They came out of the United Kingdom domain. Um, they actually live in the London domain. And then they walked all the way around the village. So that huge walk what that did was create a portal into this light. And that was just the one domain. So every domain that we have across the village, every time they do a big walk all around the village and they are holding intention with every step they take, with every, um, with every word they show, with every um, focus that they hold, they create a portal and there's lots of portals coming. So I would say to individuals, when you read the novel and you see that some of these village inhabitants are walking round and round the village and you think, well, what's the point of walking round and round the village, holding our words, holding our letters, because nothing is happening, nothing is changing. On a spiritual level, on a multidimensional antimatter level, when that is focused and not done with anger, with resistance, but when it's done with intention and sovereignty and empowerment and wisdom as it now is, because the majority of these village inhabitants that are walking round and round and round the village are in that space of activation. When it is done that way, it is flooding this pre-matter template field with aligned matching consciousness to create that eventuality, that singularity overshadowing this false awakening. Does that mean the false awakening may not even happen? Well, yes, to a point, what is more likely is the false awakening and the true awakening will be occurring at the same time. And that the true awakening will drown out the false awakening. If you can actually see how these intentions are creating a superimposed manifestation, a superimposed reality creating a um, a mixed manif manifestation and different individuals within the village holding different perspectives about what that manifestation is based on the belief structure that they have and whether they are controlled by the overlords or whether they've broken free. So all of that is yet to play out in the novel. And obviously I haven't written those chapters yet. Um, I'm writing them in real time and I'm taking my inspiration for this novel from events that are occurring in our, in our um, actual reality, you know, something I might hear on the news or see on social media. I think, oh, that's inspiration for my novel. So um, that's kind of how it's, how it's going. So the movement round and round the village from these walkers, from these individuals from the London domain and the United Kingdom domain 
created a huge portal into this light, a portal into the um, understanding of this blueprint and the downloads of this plasma monadic structure. And then I finished this um, post with the words, we move forward now as one. And as I uh, am reading this, I've just noticed that there are 108 comments and 108 is uh, a very powerful number and it is a geometric communication from the universe um, that shows you, you that you are in alignment with truth, you are in alignment with um, creativity, in alignment with positivity, and you are on the right path, if you will. So to see 108 comments there, uh, that shows me that this novel, um, this fictional story um, is um, placed in alignment. And when the novel is written, um, I just want to thank everybody listening for playing their part in having some kind of input into this novel because I, I listen to your, your comments uh, over on Telegram and over on Instagram whenever I post about uh, the novel, uh, on MeWe as well. Um, I'm on Gab, I'm on Minds, and I listen to the comments and I listen to your emails and um, many of the things that you've said have been inspiration for characters in the novel or for certain playouts in the novel. So yeah, that's the next part of this fictional novel that is um, going to play out um, in the uh, next coming few chapters that uh, I'm going to write. So um, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and uh, explain all that to you. So thank you ever so much for listening. And if you want to actually go and uh, read more of these um, statuses that I've been posting about this, then uh, you can find me, as I said, on Telegram, on Instagram, on MeWe, and on Minds and Gab. So thank you ever so much for listening. Lots of love, everyone. See you all soon. Bye.